So the last time we talked about should we negotiate dispute making against deal making, uh, interest against positional one. That is just setting up the negotiation. So we're going to talk about analyzing the negotiation. So this will take a number of weeks. Okay. Uh, so first we're going to look at the overview of analyzing the negotiation. So we, what we want to do is make a framework for a negotiation. We want to be able to map and analyze the issues properly. So these are the main seven questions we use when we're analyzing a negotiation. Best alternative to a negotiation agreement. What will we do if there's no agreement? We need to find out this. We need to find out who are the parties. Do you understand parties? People in the negotiation. What are their needs and priorities? What are their interests? How can we create value? This, we'll spend a longer time on this one. Okay. We'll talk about bargaining. We'll also talk about what barriers. How can we get more power in, in the negotiation to influence the outcome? And we'll also mention about ethics. So when we're analyzing the negotiation, we think about these seven things. So. Uh, I'll briefly introduce these things today, but we'll talk about each of them in more detail. Uh, but not best alternative to a negotiated agreement. So we have two choices in negotiation, usually. We can either agree or we can walk away. Okay? So this tells us, if we walk away, what is our preferred course of action? This is also called our no-deal option. So, we have to find another option. If we don't make a successful negotiation, we need to have another option that we can do. Okay? Because if we don't have another option, then we don't really have a choice. We have to make the negotiation on the other person's terms, on what the other person wants. So before we do the negotiation, we should know what is our other course of action? So, if you're buying a car, can you tell me what is your what are your other options instead of buying a car? Buy a used car. Let's say you're going to buy a new car for fifteen thousand dollars, right? You could buy. You assess your other options, right? You can buy a used car. Okay. What other can you do? Other options? Take the subway. Right, you might have to just take the subway and spend the money somewhere else. Okay? What is going to help you if you have if you're sitting down in the office of the salesperson buying the car? If you have a good alternative, it's going to help you, right? In the end, you can even tell them you're a good alternative to make them to reduce the price. But if you go into the office and you don't have any alternative, then you're in kind of a weak position, right? For example, there's no subway to your work. Okay? You have to get a car. You don't have a choice. Okay? Uh, you didn't find any information about used cars. You don't know anything about car market, okay. then you might just get a bad deal. So, do you understand alternative? You can see here alternative. What does alternative mean? Change. Another way. Another option. Okay, another way. So our best alternative to the agreement, Batman. 
So here are some things we can think about. We can make a uh, keeping offer, uh, time pressure, relationships, or acceptance of risk. So for example, I might want to, I need a car by next week. Okay? So that could be a factor in my Batman. Do I have any time pressure? Yes. What about the relationship? If I buy a car from this guy, maybe next year he'll give me a free upgrade to another car. Okay? Or two years later it'll be a good deal. And again, just acceptance of risk. Maybe different people have different views of risk, so I could make a contract where I sell the car again after one year at a certain price. So I don't have too much risk. <clears throat> so when we're thinking about our bat map, if I think, let's say, my next best option is I can buy a used car, let's say, I'm not that. Let's say that, make it simpler, we have another car. I am looking at two cars. Okay? The next one car is 15,000. Right? This is the one I want. The next one is 16,000. Okay? This is in, maybe this is another one that I don't want. So, if this is my best alternative, right? I'm buying the car. Then if, my, if this is too rigid, do you understand rigid? I stick too closely to this, I might not get a good result, or I might not think of a creative solution. Because I might say, 15,000 is better than 16,000. So I'll accept 15,000, right? So if I'm thinking about my Batman too much, it's too rigid, right? We have to be careful, okay? We could take, I could get a better deal here, right? But I think, oh, it's better than my Batman, so it's okay, right? So we don't have to focus on the number of the Batman too much, right? When we're making the negotiation. Uh, we'll talk about it later, decision trees. We can decide which is better. We have to decide which is better. Uh, the negotiated agreement or our Batman? So we, have, we can make some way to decide which one is better, using a tree. We'll talk about it later. And the other part, we should try to guess the other party's BATNA to give a picture of the ZOPA. ZOPA is Zone of Potential Agreement. So let's say here, uh, we could, we'll explain more later, but Zone of Potential Agreement basically means seller's price, is their last price that they will sell it for. Okay, and then we have the buyer's last price. If the seller's last price is lower than the buyer's last price, we have a zone of agreement, right? So their last price is 10,000. And their last price is 12,000. Can they make an agreement? Yes. Yes, right? This is a zone of potential agreement, okay? So, in between there. What about if the seller's last price is 20,000 and the buyer's last price is 12,000? Can we make an agreement? No. No, oh, right? So zone of potential agreement means that there should be your BATNA and my BATNA. They should be somewhere in between that we can meet. Then we can make an agreement. So this is BATNA. We'll, later today we'll, we'll start talking about the BATNA because that's number one on the list. Okay. We look at some examples. So the second part is parties. So we have to ask who are the parties in the negotiation. So we might think just me and the person having the negotiation, the person who's selling the car in the office. There's just the two of us in this negotiation. Who else could be in the negotiation? do you think? Who else would be important? I'm talking to the car salesman in his office or her office. Mm -hmm. Who could be another party in this negotiation? 
you go to buy a car, you talk to the car salesman. Is it only you and the car salesman? Or is there another party who could be important? Company? Like the guy's manager or boss, right? The salesman might not have the authority to reduce the price, but his manager might have the authority to reduce the price. So he might have to call up the manager. When I was an undergraduate student, I went to Canada for the summertime. And I went to a job interview just for the summer to sell vacuum cleaners. Do you know vacuum cleaners? Yes. Very expensive vacuum cleaner, $1,000. Okay? And then we, we were supposed to go to people's homes and do a demonstration and then try to sell them the vacuum cleaner. So they told us that to do some marketing trick. So in the end I didn't take the job because the company was a little bit dishonest. So their marketing trick was, you show them the price of the vacuum cleaner, it's $1,000, right? But then you talk to them and you say, oh you're really nice people, I like you a lot. <laughs> right? And then you say, I'm going to call my manager and get a better price for you. And then you have to call on the phone, but you pretend to call. You don't really call anybody. Just pretend to call. <laughs> Nobody's on the phone. Just outside the door. And you say very loudly, but I really like this, these people. I really like this couple. Can't you make a good price for them? Right? So they can hear. But you're not talking to anybody. <laughs> and then you come back in and say, oh, I talked to my manager. He said, okay, just for today. Just for today, we can make special price for you guys. I begged him, and the price is now $800. Then people feel like they're getting a good deal, right? Marketing trick. So I didn't, I didn't join the company. <laughs> I didn't like to do that kind of thing, right? It's a little bit dishonest. But the point is that, in that case, they were pretending to call the manager. But in another negotiation, it could be the same, that really they have to call the manager, okay? The manager has to decide the price. So we have to remember there could be some influential player who we can't see at the table. So the car salesman and the manager. Can the representatives make a binding commitment? Maybe the car salesman will tell you, okay, I can sell it to you for 10,000, okay? But then he talks to his manager and his manager says, no, you can't sell for 10,000. It's too cheap. Okay? So, we have to think about other people too. So we can also make the negotiating parties more. Finding another bidder or purchasing competitors. So we talked about the example of uh, earlier, the guy who wanted to sell his company, but he wasn't happy with the price he was being given. So he went and found other people to join the bidders, or to, like kind of they're going to be parties in the negotiation. Okay. So we'll talk about that, about the parties. Then we'll talk about interests. What are people's fundamental needs and priorities? For example, timing might be important. So here we're probing, asking people about their interests. Okay. Can you give me an example of a probing question? What's an example of a probing question? Paul, please ask. Yes, ask. To spend. To get information. So, can you give me an example of a question, which is a probing question? Do you get married? Are you married? Mm -hmm. Well, at a negotiation. What kind of question would you ask the other party to get information from them? How's your budget? Okay, you could ask them, how much is your budget? Usually, how important to you is, is a good question. How important to you is time? How important to you is money? Okay? How important to you is risk? Right, that kind of question. Or, like, what do you think about the timing of the delivery? So we, we ask them questions, and we find out what they want, what their priorities are. 
So we try to find some, there can be some interest which we don't know about, the other person has, and we can help them with that interest. Okay? We have to remember our own interests and our own objectives because sometimes we get caught up into the negotiation or the other person personality and we can miss out on some opportunity because we're not just focusing on our interests. Okay? So we shouldn't allow the emotion or other thing to get in the way. So for example, I could be bargaining with the car salesman. I don't like the car salesman. He's very arrogant, right, and rude. He was rude to me. Okay? He used a pande mal in Korea, right? Should the salesperson use pande mal in Korea? Pande mal? Pande mal? Yeah. <laughs> the car salesman said to me, Yeah! Go ahead! Right? He's very rude. So, I could get, I don't like the salesman, I'm going, right? Then I, I miss an opportunity because I lost focus of my objective. Okay? My objective was, get the car at a cheap price. Okay? So we shouldn't get caught up in emotion or we don't like other people or they're rude or they did something wrong like that. Okay? We have to think what's best for me. Okay? This is the best for me, so I'm not going to meet the salesperson again after I buy the car. So uh, we have to remember to focus on our own interests in the negotiation as well. Or sometimes we can say, oh, he didn't do this for me, so I'm not doing that for him. Okay? So, again, it doesn't make sense. If it's good for you, in the end, you, you should accept the deal. Okay? Better option for you. Did you ever have that situation where you were negotiating with somebody about something and because you got angry, you lost some opportunity? Yes? What happened? It's your mom? Okay. Do you want to say what it was? For example, you're going to go on a holiday together, but you have some fight and you don't want to go and then I'm not fine. I'm not fine. Right? <laughs> then nobody goes on the holiday. Lose lose negotiation, right? So we have to just keep side of our, our interest. Okay, so the next one is value. So how can value be created and who is going to get it? Okay, so this is, we'll spend more time on this, more central part of the negotiation. Okay? Uh, there is more at stake than just price. So we need to visualize the value. What other things can make value apart from price? Price, and apart from price, except for price, what other things can make value? Service. Service. Relationships. Relationships, right? So we have to look through and see. Um, we can make a mutual gain, like we explained in the pizza. Okay, you can get the part you like, I can get the part I like. Then we have to manage the tension between creating and claiming value. So when we are creating value, we're working together. Okay? When we're claiming value, we're trying to get a little bit more of the value for ourselves. Okay? It's a little bit more win-lose. So the problem is, if we focus a lot on claiming value, getting just more for ourselves, then we can lose out in creating value. Because the other person might uh, not agree because when we're creating value we have to be quite cooperative so we have to try and manage this tension between the two things they're kind of like opposites right we have to work together to create value and then we have to try and claim a little bit more value for ourselves so like we mentioned before value is created by looking at differences as well as common ground so we looked at the example uh, of Israel and Egypt 
we said they had some differences, right? We already talked briefly about creating value. The next one is barriers. So in this case, what obstacle can prevent an agreement and how can they be overcome? So what do you think? What are some barriers or obstacles that can stop an agreement from happening? Can you think of some example? So different, right? Anything else? Limit, limit, what's the limit? In right. negotiation to buy um, sell loss price limit. So we could have a very small ZOPA or no ZOPA. Yes. Right? We have to try and be creative to find a way to match. What about the case of you and your mother? What was the barrier to the agreement? Negotiator. 
So she knew exactly how to manipulate my wife. <laughs> so she told her, let's make a cafe in the balcony. So my wife thought, oh, a cafe in the balcony. <laughs> Great. That's, oh. right. Then she said, like, seven million one. Right? So my wife had this idea, image of a nice cafe on the balcony. And then she told me, and then I said, that's just a table and two chairs and light. <laughs> right? Table costs uh, Ishik Man one. Chairs Ship Man one, light Ship Man one. That's Sasha Man one, not Chip Man one. Right? So my wife was disappointed. She said, but it's a cafe. And I said, no, it's not a cafe, it's a table and two chairs on the balcony. It's not going to be a cafe. Do you want to be married to me? <laughs> hmm? No, I'm too mean. So I'm quite, I say financially wise, but my wife says mean, right? My vocabulary is financially wise, but generally, uh, she was thinking more with her emotion, right, about the nice colour and the cafe, the idea, and I was thinking just rationally. So probably I'm not thinking emotionally enough, I'm just thinking very rationally. So sometimes that's why men and women can make a good team, right? If you live in my house, it will just be some very simple black chair, right, with no colour or niceness. But maybe my wife will spend a lot of money on things. Right? Like that. So we have to be careful of those things when we're... That can be a barrier in the negotiation. Okay? Uh, stereotypes. Uh, we can have stereotypes about race, about gender, about age, about different things. Right? Well, this guy is too young. Right? Or this girl is too young. I don't think she can... I don't think she can make a negotiation. Right? Uh, I don't want to make deal with her? Or how can I give in to the young person like that? In Korea maybe that might be more, right? So we have to be careful about those things. That can also be a barrier. <coughs> then we have some institutional barrier, like the legal barrier. There might be some rule why we can't do the agreement, so we have to find another way to get around that. So we're going to learn about, also spend some time learning about this, how to overcome the barriers. Next one is power. Do you want power? Do you want to be powerful? People like power, right? What they say, power corrupts. So in this case, we're talking about how the parties can influence the negotiation process and its outcome. So. Uh, we want to have a stronger influence. Do you understand influence? Yes. So if I can have a stronger influence on the negotiation, I can have more power. So usually when we think about power, people think about bargaining power. The strength of your batna. Okay? My batna is very strong. I have a lot of options. I can buy a lot of different cars. Right? Maybe the economy might be bad. The salesman's batna is low. They haven't sold many cars this month. They need the commission. Okay? They need to sell some cars. So it seems like their batna is bad. No customers, bad economy. Right? My batna is good. I have a lot of options. So people traditionally think about that as bargaining power. But this can, might not always be true. Even though I have a lot of options, the salesman might not be able to reduce the price. Okay? So this is not entirely correct. Sometimes the strength of my batna can help me to have more power. I have a better option somewhere else. You have no options, right? But sometimes it, it doesn't work either. So actually the scholars are having an argument. They're not sure exactly how to define power in the negotiation, right? Another way we can get power is to change the basic architecture of the negotiation. So change the setup. We talked about in this 3D idea, we're going to try and change the setup of the negotiation. We can try to weaken the other person's partner. So, I'm having a negotiation with the salesman about 
buying the car, and my Batman is to buy another car, right? How can the salesman weaken my Batman? So for example, I'm going to buy a BMW, right? I go to the BMW garage and I tell him, hey, I can buy an Audi, just $1,000 more, I can buy an Audi. What can the BMW person do to weaken my Batman? My Batman is I can buy an Audi. What can they do to try and make my Batman weaker? Do you understand Audi? Yes. Audi is a type of car. Yes. How do you say in Korean? Yes. Audi. Audi. So what are you going to do? You're, a sales, you're the salesperson. What are you going to tell me to weaken my Batman? I tell you, hey, I can buy an Audi for set for one thousand dollars more. What are you going to say? Keep up the mission. That's improving your offer. How can you weaken? I'm going to introduce a uh, Batman. That's improving your offer. I'm asking, how can you weaken my Batman? Yes, you have to tell me how bad the Audi is, right? Uh -huh. Oh, Audi is really bad. Did you see they had an accident last year uh -huh. with the brakes, right? Braking the Audi is very bad quality, right? Give some fact or figure to show that Audi is not a good car, okay? Mm -hmm. So then, that's weakening my Batman. That's another... You can get power in that way. Then I say, oh yes, you're right, maybe... Audi did have a problem with their brakes. Okay, I'll buy the car, right? So we can try to make the other person's option weaker. Bargaining power can also be a reflection of your knowledge and your skill. So if you know more information and you are good at negotiating, that's also power in a negotiation, okay? Are you good at persuading people to do things? Are you good at negotiating? No? But that's a source of power, right? So hopefully at the end of the course you'll be better at negotiating. So that just having skill in negotiating is power and knowledge. So the last one is ethics for analyzing the negotiation. What does ethics mean? Somebody studied ethics before? Hmm? What does ethics mean? Doing the right thing. Doing the right thing, right? Is it law? Is ethics the same as law? No. What's the difference between ethics and law? Ethics um, control our hearts. Yes, it's like ethics is doing the right thing according to your own conscience or your own moral philosophy, right? Uh, law is in uh, rules which are made by the government, okay? So obviously we are going to have laws which tells us we can't cheat the other person, right? There's some law we'll talk about in more detail later. You can't do fraud, right? You can't tell me to, if the car, the car, it's a used car and the car has 100,000 kilometers, okay? You can't change the clock to say 50,000, right? That's breaking the law, okay? But ethics is over the law. It's wrong to do that. So we have to think about how honest should I be with the other person? Do I need to tell them everything or not? How much should I tell them? How fair should I be with the other person? Okay. Uh, how much pressure can we apply? So here is, maybe I made a really good deal for myself, but some people think that we shouldn't just try to get a lot of money for ourselves, right? We should also think about other people too. How much pressure can we apply? So we have some information about the other person. Can we use that or not? Right? How much should we think about those or not at the bargaining table? If we use an agent, should we do something against the wishes of the client if we feel it is better for them? So, do you understand agent? 
What is an agent? Person who is working for us in the negotiation. So, do you know Wu Dong San? Yes. Wu Dong San is like an agent, right? If you're selling your house, you don't talk to the person. Wu Dong San talks to the person. Okay, the real estate agent. Their name is real estate agent in English. So, the agent is acting for you. So, if we are an agent, let's say that our client told us, uh, don't sell the house for less than this price. But we feel that the real estate market is falling quickly. So we think we should sell the house. For, we have an offer slightly less. So should I sell the house or not? Right? That kind of idea. So we'll discuss about those kind of things too. So basically, to make a effective negotiation, we need a clear framework, including badness, Identifying interests to create value, recognizing barriers, and thinking about ethical issues. So, what we want to do in this class is develop our own framework, right, through study and experience. So, we'll, we'll, it's like riding a bicycle. You can study how to ride a bicycle, but you also need to try, right? We'll try doing negotiation in the class, but also after you graduate or just in your life, you can practice, right? using the negotiations. Right. And <coughs> we should have good communication skills and creativity. They're also things we need when we're negotiating. Good communication skills, listening to other people. Are you good listeners? Are you good listeners? Yes. You're a good listener? Yes. Then you should be popular with the ladies. <laughs> right? Women like men who are good listeners. So, are you guys good at listening or talking? Which are you better at doing, listening or talking? Listening? I think Korean people are good at listening, generally, compared to the Western people, right? Why are Korean people good at listening? Get information. Do you learn when you're young? To be very polite and listen? people well? Yes? Does your father tell you, be quiet, listen, <laughs> hmm? a lot when you're a kid? No? Sometimes. Sometimes? We don't talk at the meal time? In Korea? Uh, no. Not much? In Turkish culture then? Yes. So, <coughs> other communication skills we need uh, is we need to say what we have to say. Some people are too shy and they don't say what they need to say, right? We have to be diplomatic, not rude. Can you be diplomatic? Hmm? If you don't agree with somebody, do you say, no, you're wrong? Or do you say, I understand your point, but I think in my, idea, in my idea, it's different. Which one do you use? Hmm? Both of them? Hmm? <laughs> the second one? Okay. Yeah, so, <clears throat> then we need to be creative to think of a solution. Because often, we might not have, uh, the Zopa might not even exist, so we have to be creative to think about how can we create value? So, do you have any question then about this? this? Is just an overview of the analyzing and negotiation. We'll talk about each thing in more detail as we go through the course. Do you have any questions so far? Partner is the difference between the price. Partner is the difference between the price. No, Zopa is the difference between the two partners. 
Yes, BATNA is our best alternative, right? You can just think of it as BA, best alternative for us and the other person. Okay? Then between the best alternative for us and the best alternative for the other person, this is zone of potential agreement. It's plenty. Clearly, if the other person has a better best alternative and I have a better best alternative, we're not going to make any deal. I'll take my alternative and they'll take their alternative, right? So where we have my best alternative is worse and their best alternative is worse, then we should be able to make a deal. Is that deal going to be closer to my best alternative or their best alternative, right? Are you going to tell them your best alternative immediately? No, right? It depends on the situation, but probably not, right? So, any more question? The same to plan B. Yes, plan B, yes, plan B. No deal. If there's no deal, what are you going to do? Uh, would, would you write in the word the vocabulary to, 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 to. We're going to study after the break about uh, Zopa. Next, we're going to study about Batna. Here's Zopa. Two more slides later, right? So, good question, right? But here's the definition. Zopa means the set of possible agreements that is better for each side, given its interest, than their Batna. And Zopa is zone of potential agreement, zone of possible agreement. Okay. Any more questions? No. So let's take a break then for 10 minutes.